Hello, uh, welcome back again. We're going to take a look at geometry section 3.1, uh, lines and angles. Okay, this is the first section from chapter 3. Some definitions, uh, parallel and skew. Parallel lines are coplanar lines that do not intersect. We have the picture on the right here. Uh, the example states that line JK is parallel to LM meaning that as long as these lines go off into infinity left and right they will never touch each other okay they are lines that are in the same plane that do not intersect by definition next one skew lines are lines that do not intersect and are not coplanar so they don't intersect like parallel lines but they're also not in the same plane so for instance example on um, the picture they have line L here is skew with line M. They never touch and they're not in the same plane. Lastly, parallel planes are planes that do not intersect. Planes A and planes B are parallel. Okay, so similar definition to parallel lines except they are planes and those planes never touch. So we have parallel lines that never touch but are in the same plane. Skew lines never touch but they're not in the same plane. Alright, and let's apply that to um, a couple situations here. Question says, name all segments parallel to BC. So let's locate, we have BC right here. We want to name all segments that are parallel to BC. Well, if we're just going around the horn, parallel, same plane but never touch, we have AD, FG, and EH. All of those segments are parallel to BC. Yeah, they kind of form around the box, all on the same plane, uh, but will never intersect. All right, next one. Name a segment skew to EH. So we have EH here. We need to find a segment that is skew to that. Skew means that it won't touch, it won't intersect, but also not in the same plane. Well, EH is on the back side of that box. So two examples that we only need to name one, but two that I would I would go with is segment AB is skewed, along with segment DC is skewed to EH, also CF and BG. So any one of those uh, will not intersect, and they aren't in the same uh, plane. So any one of those four would work for that question. Alright, name a plane parallel to plane ABG. So we have plane ABG. Okay, we can go ahead and fill that in here. So name a plane parallel to this plane. Well, if that's the bottom of a little uh, cubic box, then I would say the top is parallel to it. Okay, and we can name that DCF or DEF or CDE or however we want to name it, but the top plane is a plane that is parallel to ABG. Okay, and they name it CDE. Any name will work for, for that plane as long as we're talking about that specific plane. Alright, next one. Name a plane that is parallel to plane RST. So we have RST. We have this top down view of the box. And we have this right here is what we're looking at. Name a plane that is parallel to it. Uh, it would be the bottom of the box. That plane is parallel to it. And looking at our choices that we have, which one would it be? It would have to be C, W, X, Y. Okay, for a plane that is parallel to plane R, S, T. Name a segment that intersects Y, Z. So we have YZ. We're looking for a segment that intersects it. We have a couple options. We have WZ, TZ, SY, and XY. We need to pick one that they give us. XY is one that intersects that segment. So therefore, we will select it. A, final answer, name a segment that intersects YZ, XY intersects it. Name a segment that is parallel to Rx. So we're locating Rx. 
again it's the side or the corner on uh, segment of a box so therefore we have three choices to choose from that are parallel QW is parallel TZ is parallel and SY is parallel the choice that they allow us to take is TZ so B TZ is parallel uh, to RX going through a lot of these questions um, similarly our, our relative uh, are repetitive and kind of go through the same uh, statements that's okay and uh, we want to make sure we have a good grasp on parallel segments planes um, and skewed lines our identifying relationships in space think of each segment in the diagram as part of a line which lines appear to fit the description so looking at a a line that is parallel to AB and contains D so if we locate AB a line that is parallel to AB and contains uh, D well that would just be DC okay so we have one that's parallel that also goes through um, point D okay and we do have uh, CD or DC for that question B says perpendicular to AB and contains D so we have this here we have AB still highlighted perpendicular to AB and contains D perpendicular here at forming a box I would say it had to be AD so segment AD alright next we have C we skew to AB and contains point D so we're still focusing on AB so we have our line AB and now skewed doesn't touch and it's not in the same plane so I would use DH a skewed line that goes through there uh, we also could have DG and lastly DE any of those lines uh, would be skewed to AB because they would not touch on the same plane and also contain point D alright last one on on this slide name the plane or planes that contain D and appear to be parallel to plane ABE ABE so you have plane ABE erase that ABE that would be here that would be the side right there on the box the left side of the box name the plane that contains D and appears to be parallel to it well I would just take the see how this is a rectangular prism I take the opposite side there and use that plane uh, to be parallel to it and we'll call that plane DCH okay. again parallel planes are two planes that do not intersect All right, identifying angles formed by transversals a transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points take a look at this picture here the red line is the transversal the angles formed by lines in a transversal have special names so taking a look again we have already um, pre-colored the red line as the transversal again a transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points and we can assume that these lines are all coplanar uh, that the red line intersects them and when we intersect um, lines using a transversal what happens is we have special relationships that happen between the angles so we have the angles um, you know monetarily uh, labeled one two three four five six seven and eight um, but those numbers could be switched however um, the names for the positions um, uh, of angles uh, will hold this will hold the same okay going through each one of the the names here of the different types of angles that are created we have corresponding angles corresponding angles are angles that occupy corresponding positions all right an example uh, of the corresponding angles would be one and five again notice how one and five are corresponding if you take a look at the uh, lines that are being transversed this blue one here and this blue one one and five are in the top left corner of kinda of this little set of four here and this little set of four here so those two little sets of four one and five are in the same exact spot so that's what it means to be corresponding in the corresponding positions similarly doing that then we would say that two corresponds with six we would say that four corresponds with eight and we would say that three corresponds with seven okay again corresponding angles correspond to a specific spot
one through. All right, next. Alternate exterior angles are angles that lie on the outside of the two lines being transversed and on opposite sides of the transversal. Examples of those. Alternative exterior, alternate exterior angles would be 1 and 8, 1 and 8, and also 2 and 7. Again, looking at the definition now with the two colors, the green and the blue, uh, we will notice that we have uh, angle 1 and angle 8 being on either side of the red line, so one on the left, one on the right, and also on the outside of the two transverse lines. So these two green lines, 1 and 8 are on the outside of the two lines and on the left and right of that transverse. So same goes for 2 and 7. That is alternate exterior angles. Alright, continuing on then. Move along to alternative, alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles are angles that are on the inside of the lines transverse and on opposite sides of the transversal. So looking at that same picture, if angles 1 and 8 and 2 and 7 were alternate exterior angles, because they are on the exterior of the lines being transverse, okay, then the interior ones will be inside here and on the opposite side of the transversal. So we'll have 4 and 5 being alternate interior angles and also 3 and 6. Okay, so that was alternate interior angles. They follow a pattern going through here. Alright, the next one. Uh, consecutive interior angles are angles that lie on the inside of the lines transverse and in, on the same side of the transversal. So we have angles that lie on the inside of the lines being transverse and also uh, the inside part of the angle. So we're on the blue part as far as inside the lines that are being transversed. Okay, so we have to be here and here. And also on the same side of the transversal. So both on the left then, 3 and 5 will be consecutive interior angles. And 4 and 6 will be consecutive interior angles. Uh, or the book may call them same side angles. Um, we're just we're going to call them consecutive interior angles because that's they're in a row consecutive uh, on the the inside or the interior of the lines being transversed. And then we have at the bottom consecutive interior angles are sometimes called same side interior angles, um, just by the definition or the way we can look at it. All right, here's a formal picture that kind of um, puts everything in perspective, if, if you like that as well. Um, they change. Notice the picture on the, the right. Um, they have the exterior, interior labeled, um, and the lines are um, look to be intersecting somewhere here off on the right. It's not the case, like the picture that we had, that the lines have to appear parallel. In fact, we're going to study later on how we can either show out those lines are parallel or not parallel. And if they are, then there's uh, special angle measurements that go with that. Okay, but again, that's just a summing up what we just did. All right, identifying the pairs. Okay, it says list all the pairs of angles that fit the description for both diagrams. Okay, so here's the first one. We want to list A, B, C, and D. First of all, for A, we need to list all the corresponding angles corresponding in the same spot. So what are all the corresponding angles here? We'll put the corresponding angles in blue, uh, one, excuse me, in red. Uh, one and three are corresponding. Okay, five and seven are corresponding. Two and four are corresponding, and six and eight are corresponding. Okay, so we have two and four, six and eight, one and three, five and seven. Those are corresponding angles. All right, taking a look at the bit B, we have alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles, we have one and eight being alternate exterior angles, and also four and five being alternate exterior angles. 
for C. We have alternate interior angles, so we have 2 and 7 on the inside of the lines being transverse and on the opposite sides of the transversal. And we also have 3 and 6, so alternate interior angles, 2 and 7 and 3 and 6. And lastly, consecutive interior angles uh, will have 2 and 3 and 6 and 7. Again, that was for consecutive interior angles. All right, and there's the list, the list of all the, the ones we just went through. All right, for our next picture, turn to the right, and we're going to name uh, for A, B, C, and D as well. Okay, why don't you take a try at that right now, um, jotting down your notes what you think the answers are for A, B, C, and D. All right, taking a look at the results then of the above picture. For A, we have angles 1 and 3, uh, 5 and 7, 2 and 4, 6 and 8 being corresponding angles. For B, alternate, alternate exterior angles, we have 4 and 8 and 5 and 1. Alternate interior for C, we have 2 and 6 and 7 and 3. And lastly for D, consecutive interior, we have 2 and 3 and 6 and 7. Classify the relationship between two and six. Okay, angles two and six, they would be corresponding angles. Okay, two and six would be corresponding angles in the same spot uh, on the uh, same side and some spots with the transversal being cut across. Um, line C being the transversal for lines A and B. So those are corresponding angles. Classify one and seven. One and seven. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and also on the exterior, so therefore we would do alternate exterior angles. Classify 3 and 8. Same side on the interior of the two lines that are being transversed, so therefore we do consecutive interior angles. and 5 on the inside of the two lines being transverse and on alternate sides though of the transversal so therefore alternate interior angles okay 4 and 5 we gotta look at 4 and 5 the line being transverse transversal of P here two lines being transversed here and here they're on the interior of those two angles, so therefore we would have consecutive interior for D, consecutive interior angles. All right, seven and nine, seven and nine. Okay, we have the two lines being transverse. We have our transversal. They are in the same spot um, above those two lines that are being transverse, so therefore we call those corresponding angles. Four and seven. Two lines being transverse, transversal. They're on the opposite sides uh, of the transversal and on the exterior of the two lines that are being um, transverse, so therefore alternate exterior angles. Two and eleven. So now we're going through two and eleven. We're kind of skipping over line M and all this middle section. So to, I would just think of getting rid of it. So I just cancel it right out. So all I'm looking at is line L, line N, and the transversal that's cutting through. So they're on the inside of the two lines that are being transverse and on the alternate sides of the transversal itself, so therefore 2 and 11 would be alternate interior angles. Okay, next question. A group of nature trails is shown. Identify the sets of lines to which line A is a transversal. 
So we're looking at line A. It's located here. Here's line A. And which one of the choices would it be to show the lines that are being transversed by A? So which lines does A intersect or appear to intersect? Choices would be A, B, C, or D. And it may not be um, so common right away. We can definitely see that, that we have um, two lines that cross it. But remember, lines are infinite, so they will cross eventually unless they're parallel. So we know that a line will cross there. And if we go here and extend A uh, in either direction, okay, we will have one, two, three, four intersections. And the intersections uh, will go through lines C, D, E, and F. So therefore, the lines that are being transversed um, would be represented by answer D. All right, same type of question. Uh, line B as a transversal. So line B as a transversal. I would say it's very similar to the last question, except we're switching A and B. We have four lines intersecting it. So therefore, we would have C as a result. All right, and last one then. C as the transversal. How many lines would intersect C? Uh, the answer would be, of course, all of them, as the lines here would all intersect C. So seeing as how C transverses all the lines, it would be B, A, B, D, E, F. All right, that ends lecture for today. We're going to talk about practice problems on page 173, uh, 1 to 43 odds. Thanks for watching.